In a world where farming met the future, some tractors didn't just plow the fields, they rewrote the rules. From turbine-powered monsters that sounded like jet engines, to silent hydrogen prototypes that looked decades ahead, and even fully driverless machines that made farmers rethink what work really means. These weren't just tractors, they were visions of tomorrow rolling on steel and rubber. So buckle up, because today we're diving into eight tractor prototypes that were way ahead of their time. Number 8. John Deere Dane Long before John Deere became a global farming powerhouse, there was a machine that could have rewritten tractor history, the Dane All-Wheel Drive. Developed by Joseph Dane Sr. between 1914 and 1918, it was one of the first four-wheel drive tractors ever built, at a time when almost every farm machine still struggled with two driven wheels and muddy fields. Unlike the simple Waterloo boys of its era, the Dane was a true engineering marvel. It featured a McVicker vertical four-cylinder gasoline engine, producing 12 horsepower at the drawbar and 24 at the belt, coupled with a three-wheel chain drive that powered all wheels, giving an unmatched traction and stability for its time. With a 21-gallon fuel tank, 4.5 by 6-inch bore and stroke, and a KW Type T magneto ignition, it was as advanced mechanically as it was conceptually. Each of the 100 units built in 1918 came out of a small East Moline, Illinois factory, the birthplace of what would later become John Deere Harvester Works. But progress came at a steep cost. The Dane's complexity and weight made it far more expensive than its competitors. At $1,200, it was nearly twice the price of the Waterloo Boy. And in the middle of World War I, Farmers wanted reliability over revolution. Ultimately, John Deere made a hard choice. Abandon the Dine and purchase the Waterloo Gasoline Engine Company instead. That decision defined the company's future, but the Dane project became a legend. A bold glimpse at what farming could have been decades earlier. Today, only two surviving examples remind us of this forgotten masterpiece. A four-wheel drive pioneer built before the world was ready for it. Number 7. John Deere GP In the early 1930s, farming was changing fast, and John Deere was desperate to stay ahead of its rival, International Harvester. The result? A bold, wide-stance machine that looked like it came from the future. The John Deere GP Wide Tread. Born from the original Model C and GP line, this tractor was John Deere's first real attempt at a row crop machine that could handle multiple rows at once. Something revolutionary in 1932. Its wide front axle wasn't just for looks, it allowed farmers to straddle two full crop rows while cultivating or plowing, saving hours of field time. The wide tread nickname came from its extended six inch longer frame and wider wheel spacing, offering stability that row crop tractors had never seen before. Under the hood, it packed a 339-cubic-inch twin-cylinder horizontal engine, capable of nearly 19 horsepower at the drawbar and 25 on the belt. Numbers that might seem small today, but in the 1930s, they powered a three-plow rating, a serious leap from its predecessors. It came with three forward gears, a mechanical implement lift, and even front and rear PTOS features far ahead of its time. But despite its innovation, the GP Wide Tread struggled with reliability and balance. Farmers found it heavy, awkward to maneuver, and too specialized for everyday work. Production ended by 1935, after around 30,000 GPs of all versions were made, and the experiment quietly faded into history. Still, the GP Wide Tread proved one thing. John Deere was willing to take bold risks to out-engineer the competition. Its DNA, the wide stance, the row crop focus, would live on for decades in the iconic tractors that followed. Number 6. Oliver X0121 In 1953, while most tractors still relied on low-compression gasoline engines, Oliver decided to think like an aerospace engineer. The result was one of the rarest and most futuristic tractors ever built. The Oliver X0121 a one-of-a-kind prototype that brought Jet Age innovation to the farm. Its name told a story, X for experimental, 
O for Oliver, and 121 for the groundbreaking 12 to 1 compression ratio of its high-octane gasoline engine. An almost unheard of feat for that era. Built in collaboration with Ethel Corporation, Oliver Engineers modified a row crop 88 frame to house a special Hercules-based high-compression engine block. Only three engines were ever built, and just one complete tractor, this very X0121, was assembled. It wasn't just the mechanics that turned heads. The color scheme was boldly reversed, a red body, green wheels, and a chrome grille, giving it a striking, futuristic look that made it stand out from every Oliver tractor before it. By May 1954, the X0121 was tested at GM's Proving Grounds in Michigan, performing flawlessly before Oliver and Ethel executives. It proved that gasoline engines could achieve diesel-like power and efficiency, but it was never meant for production. Instead, the X0121 served as a research platform, shaping the future of tractor engine design for decades to come. By the 1960s, it had moved to Iowa State University as a teaching tool, later rescued and restored in 1987. Today, the world's only X0121 proudly sits in the Floyd County Museum in Iowa, a shining symbol of the moment when Oliver tried to bring jet age power to the plow. Number 5. International Harvester 400 Diesel In 1956, a farmer and inventor named Dwight Garrett looked at his International Harvester 400 Diesel and thought, one engine isn't enough, so he built something the world had never seen before. The Garrett Twin Engine 400, a monster of torque and ambition that pushed the limits of farm engineering. Rather than modifying a factory design, Garrett created his own. Two IH-400 diesel engines mounted side by side, synchronized to drive a single transmission system. Each engine came from a four-cylinder, 281 cubic inch diesel power plant, producing around 48 horsepower on its own. But together, they delivered nearly double the output, transforming an ordinary tractor into a true powerhouse. The twin-engine setup was meant to deliver massive pulling strength, ideal for deep plowing and heavy field work. But the idea came at a cost. The machine became enormously heavy, complex to maintain, and tricky to control. Balancing power between two engines required constant tuning, and even a minor misalignment could throw the whole drive system off. Still, the Garrett tractor stood as a remarkable symbol of farmyard innovation and mechanical daring. It was never mass-produced, but it captured the imagination of collectors and engineers alike. Today, the only known example, owned by Harry Lee of Elnora, Indiana, still appears at tractor shows like the Half Century of Progress, where crowds gather to hear the thunderous roar of its twin diesels. It may have been too wild for production, but the Garrett Twin Engine 400 remains one of the boldest experiments ever to roll across a field. Number 4. Alice Chalmers Fuel Cell In 1959, while the world was still running on gasoline and diesel, Alice Chalmers introduced something truly revolutionary, the world's first fuel cell-powered vehicle, and it wasn't a car or a spaceship, it was a tractor. This experimental machine proved that clean, silent, zero-combustion power could work on the farm, more than 60 years before green energy became a global movement. Built on a modified Alice Chalmers D12 chassis, this prototype hit a complex heart under its hood. 1,008 alkaline fuel cells, arranged in 112 stacks of nine each. Instead of burning fuel, these cells created electricity by combining hydrogen and oxygen, producing only water and carbon dioxide as byproducts. For public demonstrations, however, engineers switched to propane and oxygen, which were easier to handle. The fuel cells generated about 15 kilowatts of electricity, enough to power a 20-horsepower DC electric motor. In October 1959, this quiet, humming tractor successfully plowed an alfalfa field in West Allis, Wisconsin, a site that stunned onlookers used to the roar of diesel engines. Despite weighing over 5,200 pounds, it managed an impressive 3,000-pound drawbar pull. Although it never reached production, the cost of the fuel cells was far too high. The project's legacy lived on. 
Alice Chalmers later contributed their fuel cell research to NASA's Gemini and Apollo missions, where similar systems powered spacecraft and provided drinking water for astronauts. Today, the original fuel cell tractor rests at the McLeod County Historical Society Museum in Minnesota. A silent reminder that sustainable farming ideas existed long before the electric revolution began. Number 3. International Harvester HT340 In 1962, International Harvester unveiled something that looked more like a spaceship than a farm tractor. The HT340, short for Hydrostatic Turbine. This futuristic prototype was decades ahead of its time, blending jet-age design with cutting-edge engineering. Sleek, enclosed, and painted in shining white and red, it was nicknamed the Jet Tractor, a machine that promised to change farming forever. At its core was a gas turbine engine built by International Harvester subsidiary, Solar Aircraft Company. The tiny turbine produced a stunning 80 horsepower, yet weighed only about 90 pounds, 40.8 kilograms, far lighter than any piston engine of its day. But the trade-off was brutal. It was incredibly loud and burned through nearly a gallon of jet fuel every five minutes. Paired with a hydrostatic transmission, the HT340 eliminated the need for a clutch, gearbox, or brakes, giving it an ultra-smooth driving experience. A revolutionary concept later adopted by many modern tractors. It debuted in July 1961 at the University of Nebraska Tractor Test Laboratory, where crowds gathered in disbelief at this turbine-powered marvel. After being damaged in a highway accident, the tractor was rebuilt and renamed HT341, equipped with a three-point hydraulic hitch and improved controls. Though its turbine power proved far too thirsty for real-world farming, the project was a technological milestone. Today, the restored HT341 resides at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, while a functional replica of the original HT340 was built in 2010 and auctioned in 2022, a lasting tribute to one of the boldest experiments in tractor history. Number 2. Trantor In 1978, while most tractors crawled across muddy fields, one British machine dared to fly down the road. The Trantor was unlike anything farmers had ever seen. A lightweight, high-speed agricultural vehicle capable of hitting 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour. Its creators envisioned it not just as a field worker, but as a multi-purpose transport machine that could haul grain to market and then plow a field the same day, all while burning less fuel. The story began in 1972 when Stuart Taylor, a student at the University of Manchester, proposed the radical idea in his engineering thesis. With his mentor, G.A.B. Edwards, he founded WHS Taylor Engineering to make it real. The first prototype rolled out in 1973, and by the late 70s, 17 pre-production models were being tested worldwide, from Africa to Malaysia. Farmers were stunned. It was compact, efficient, and astonishingly fast. Powered by small but energetic diesel engines, Trantor's light frame and full suspension gave it a car-like ride, something unheard of for tractors at the time. It promised better fuel economy, faster transport between fields, and versatility for developing regions where one vehicle had to do everything. But the world simply wasn't ready. Farmers distrusted the fast tractor concept, and larger companies like JCB later perfected the idea with their fast track line in the 1990s. Financial troubles and supply chain issues ended Trantor's British production before it could prove itself. Still, the Trantor lives on as a visionary prototype, a tractor that sprinted decades ahead of its competition, paving the way for the high-speed agricultural machines we see today. Number 1. Case IH Autonomous Unveiled at the 2016 Farm Progress Show in Iowa, the Case IH Autonomous Concept Vehicle ACV, was unlike any tractor ever seen before. No cabin, no driver, no steering wheel. Built on the chassis of the Case YH Magnum, it represented the next great leap in agricultural innovation, full autonomy. Instead of a farmer in the seat, the ACV was controlled entirely by computer or tablet, allowing remote supervision of its every move. Using a mix of radar, LIDAR, and cameras, the tractor could detect obstacles, 
stop automatically, and even plan the most efficient fuel pass on its own. It could operate day and night, 24-7, maximizing productivity while reducing fuel waste and downtime. The dream of precision agriculture made real. Its sleek, futuristic body reflected Case 1 on 8's vision of farming in the autonomous era. Efficient, connected, and human-free. Yet despite the hype, the ACV was not meant for immediate production. It was a concept, a bold experiment to test how farmers would react to a world where tractors think for themselves. The feedback was clear. The technology was exciting, but the world wasn't ready to go fully driverless. Legal issues, insurance concerns, and the need for human oversight slowed adoption. As a result, Case YH shifted strategy, focusing on semi-autonomous systems like Raven Autonomy, which bring automation to traditional tractors while keeping a human operator in control when needed. Even so, the Case IH ACV remains a symbol of agricultural evolution. The moment when the tractor stopped being just a machine and started becoming an intelligent partner in the field. They were bold, they were visionary, and though many never saw the light of production, their innovation paved the road for the tractors we see today. Which one do you think truly changed the game? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more legendary tractor stories.